Hi everybody, I'm Ashley and I wanted to take a few minutes to share with you what I'm going to be teaching on my first week of school. Now as you'll see on my lesson plans, this is only a two-day week for me, which makes getting to know each other, getting into our transitions and procedures much easier. Now, if you'll notice, when my students arrive in the morning, I begin with a back to school all about me booklet. Now, this booklet is a great way to keep students busy and occupied as they're entering the classroom. You know, I always have school supplies to put away. I'm getting my pictures made, introducing myself to parents. We do have a back to school night. But it's still a really busy morning, so this is a great way to keep students on task as they come in. I highly suggest having something prepared for students to do that they can do independently. Now, once everybody's in the classroom and once we're all situated, then we begin going over our expectations, our rules, our behaviors, and we use this back to school booklet to do this. Now, in the back to school book, it's full of pages for interactive notes. So for example, we'll go over our classroom rules. What does that look like? Um, we talk about our behavior plan. We go over our morning routine in detail. Now, I do not have students just sit there and listen and take notes all morning because that's unrealistic for elementary students, but we get up, we practice these, we keep this active. Do a lot of think, pair, shares, and just practice, practice, practice. Now on the first day of school, after I finish going over our rules and routines, we do some team building activities that you can read more about on my blog. Um, but I really don't get into any academic lessons until our reading lesson. Now, on the first day of school, I do combine reading Unit 1, Lesson 1 and 2. My students come to me already familiar with Reading Workshop, so I don't really feel the need to drag out the procedural lessons to the extent I would if they were coming to me unfamiliar with it. So I combine Lesson 1, which is how to select a book. Now, I will print my reading interest survey and my students will be completing that and turning it in so that I can help put them with the right text throughout the year. And then we will also just talk about the five finger rule when students are reading. I do not print out this printable. It's perfectly fine if you want to, but I just didn't feel the need to print that out. So that's what we'll do on that very first day of school. And then on the second day of school, we'll te I'll teach my thinking about reading lesson. And then once again, I don't print out this printable. Instead, I get an anchor chart and I write thinking about reading on it. And then as students read, they fill out sticky notes of things they're thinking about during reading. And during our closing time, everybody gets to share something that they wrote and then they just stick it on the anchor chart. Hi, so in math, we don't actually have a <clears throat> lesson on the first day of school. That's just procedural lessons, what is math workshop, behaviors during math workshop. I get all of those lessons from my first 10 days of math workshop. So our first content related lesson is actually the second lesson in my fourth grade math place value unit. I skipped the first lesson for now just because it took a little too long for my students to complete last year. They weren't quite ready for that involved of a task. Now in this first lesson, students are just naming and writing six digit numbers. Now if you're a teacher who teaches in a state where you go through the billions place, I did make alternative templates for you as well. Now when I'm teaching this lesson, I love using place value chips. I got mine from Amazon and they're just foam little circles with you know hundred thousand, a thousand, and we use these place value chips and students whiteboards to write different numbers. These are more effective to me than base 10 blocks because once we're getting into large numbers, you know, we can't make a hundred thousand with our place 10 box, base 10 blocks. I mean, maybe we could make one, but I don't have enough for every student to create 300,000. But with these, it's really fairly easy. Now, if this lesson goes well, then I do a little game that I call number war. Now what I'll do is I'll cut these out and students will play with a partner. They shuffle them up, they place them face down, then they each draw a card and they have to determine the total value of their number. 
For example, this person would have 20 hundreds, 14 tens, and 13 ones. So they're going to have to determine what the total is for that number. Then, of course, whichever student's number is the greatest gets to keep both cards. Now, on that first day of school, this is when I also, in, excuse me, second day of school, this is when I introduce my math reference notes. And on the first day, we will go over the place value table that students will be able to reference. And then we'll do this for guided practice as well. Now, also on the first day of school, I don't have an actual science lesson. We're still getting to know each other. But then on the second day of school, we jump into our ecosystems unit. Now, I have written a passage on ecosystems that my students will read. And then we're going to complete this graphic organizer together where students are determining the difference between a biosphere, biome, and ecosystem. We'll do this in addition to the Study Jams video. This is just a good, easy step into getting into ecosystems. The really fun lessons will begin next week.